Alright, so first thing is first, how to access the WordPress interface. Now, all you have to do to do that is, from the uscsart.org homepage, you add to the end of the uh, URL, wp-admin, and hit enter, wp-admin, which will take you to the login page, as you see on the screen. Now, what I will be doing is, I'll be issuing each of the project leaders their own username, which will be your USC site uh, email address, and of course a generic password. So, what I will do now is I'll log into the master account. And now this is the full WordPress dashboard. What you will see when you log in is a very, very, very condensed version of this. The master uh, account has all the, all, this is everything. This is the whole entire inner workings of the site, which is why it looks very complicated and daunting. But what the project leaders and executive team and other members that will be have access to, all you will see is, number one, the post tab, which is where you add in the posts to the homepage. Number two, the media tab, which is where you upload your videos, your images for your, for your uh, news posts. And the portfolio items tab, which is where all the pages of the project leaders' uh, profiles are located. And finally, the calendar tab, which is where you will go to add in the events on the home page. So, what I will now do is... Question. Um, yes. Portfolio items, you mean like where it's got the photo and then like the bit more project leader, blah, 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 those? It's the entire project page, so the description and everything. Oh, okay. Well, so the, like, for example, the Koya page. Exactly. And then it's like, okay. blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yes. So what I will do now is, I'm going to go in and delete Amy's posts and show you how to take it from a Word document an image sitting on your desktop into the website and online. Um, all right, so let's get rid of this. Right, it's gone. All right, so now how I'd be looking is for people that are writing articles, oops, wrong one. You will have it up in the Word document. This is after it's been edited, after it's been approved, after it's been approved from the editor and Selena as well. So here it is, sitting all nice and um, ready to go. So all you have to do is, after you've logged into the interface, you go to the post tab, then you hit add new. And this will take you to the writer's interface. This is where the majority of your time in WordPress will be spent. So all you have to do is copy your body content and paste it into the body content of the WordPress editor. Same thing goes with the title. Now, how this theme is set out, as you may, as you will have seen before, is that art, how articles are based is you have the, the title and a subtitle. Ideally, if you could come up with a subtitle, uh, that, you know, is catchy and supports your article. And by all means, if you cannot, then just use your name. Can we um, use our slogan? That we've sure. got a bit of a slogan for Queer. So but make sure that it's unique for each article that you upload. If you're okay. using the same slogan over and over again, it becomes irrelevant and it also isn't good for SEO. So going back to the post interface, we've got the title in, we've got the body content in. Now to, to make sure that your titles appear in this little blue bar, you have to go to the uh, Feature Heading Type section and hit Title and Custom Text. Highlight that, uh, highlight that box there. So what was that section called, Feature and Heading? Feature and... I can't read that. Feature thing. Header Type, which is the first option under the striking page general options. So all you do here is, again, rinse and repeat, add in your article's title to the Feature Header Custom Title and then your subtitle to the feature header custom text box. And now, once you've completed that, to get the sidebar to appear on the side, you have, all you do is go to custom sidebar, 
hit the down arrow, and then click on Select Home Page Sidebar. And that's really all you have to worry about on this side of the interface. Uh, don't worry about the SEO for now, because I'll, I'll handle that. Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of complicated things I don't have time to cover, to cover SEO right now, maybe in the future. Now to add in the image that will appear as a header of your post and also on the home page, you go to the side where it says featured image and then hit set featured image. Now, to upload one from your desktop, you go to select file, locate it wherever it is on your computer, and there you go, it's uploaded. Um, for the title, just add in whatever, whatever is relevant, what do you think is, what, it'll just make it easier for when I'm going through the media database, that if everything's all nice and relevant title to the image, it just makes it easier for me, mm -hmm. so Scythe Wall Cup KL Hours. Um, don't worry about changing any of these settings here, except the size. Make sure that it is uh, full size. And then click Use as Feature Image. And then. So what was that one then? Um, full size, and then you said. Then it will come up as uh, use as feature image as a little uh, oh, yes. yep. and then you just click that and then finally save all changes and then just exit this box. Now as you will see here, if you've done it correctly, it will appear up under the featured image section. Okay. Now I'm taking it for, this is, you've written the article but you haven't had it approved, okay? If you haven't had it approved, Hit save as draft. Now what this will do is it will contain the article inside the WordPress data, uh, the WordPress in the server, so everyone can see it that has access to login. I can see it, but it won't be published online. So once you get the go ahead, which I'll be covering in the section, second section, you then hit publish. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You're right. And then once. And just, um, just while I'm on the topic of images, now, until we get a photographer on board that can take high quality images at our events, because we are a non-profit organization, we have access to Flickr's Creative Commons group. Now, these are images that are taken by professional photographers and also photography enthusiasts that are available in high resolution and are available to, for non-profits free of cost. So what I do not want to see is Google Images. I, it's very, very important that we do this side to the book. That it's not, it's, I'm not saying this for me, I'm saying it to hold the professional uplook of the organization. Okay, so, so... Do we have a login for that or is it just... Um, you can access them without having a login. Yeah. Or if you do wish to have one, you can make one. It's very straightforward. So for now, I highly suggest that when you searching for an image for your article, that you have one as A, relevant, but B, and most importantly for the overall visual outlook of the site, that it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> Put simply, it, the site, what will make or break the news feed is the images, because I've made it, I've made it focus, to focus on the imagery. So if you can make sure that it just looks good, that's really all, and it's relevant, great. The rest will fall down to your content, which is, well, content is king at the end of the day. Okay, so, now is there any questions on that before I move on? Um, the only thing I was wondering, does that mean all our photos will have to be, like, landscape? Oh, yes, thanks for bringing that up, Kat. One thing that you do need to look for when you are searching for images is that the minimum dimensions are 960 pixels wide by 350 pixels high. Now that's the minimum dimensions, they don't have to fit that. But they, 960 pixels wide by 350 pixels high. Now that's the minimum dimensions, they don't have to be that. When do we see that? Um, after you save it, you can then right click properties, or even in your Windows um, 
in your photo viewer, it will tell you in the, uh, in the, in the data there. On a map, is that would just, that just be in preview somewhere? Yeah, when you yeah that's open right. It? Okay. Excuse me, James. Yes. When we go to Flickr, we choose an image, we download it to our hard drive, our storage space, yes. and then we upload it from our desktop or our whatever. Yes, that's into, right. yep. I think, yeah, thank you. Can we go organise at the executive team meeting what the go is for the images, just so we don't have any... Well, this will be covered in the content approval system. Not only we're checking content, we're checking the appropriateness of images as well. So, but if it, if we do need it to bring us up, then we will. So, James, those dimensions for the photos is that just purely for uh, the site um, WordPress because of the way you've set it up, or or is that the minimum dimensions for any WordPress site? Well, the reason why I say these dimensions is because these are the exact dimensions of the slider on the home page. So as long as they are at minimum of those images, then you can take your image and feature it in the slider. So that's your call to action. That's, if, imagine it as a newsreel. You know, it's the first thing that people see on the site. If you want to get your, if you want to get your content out there, get an attractive image, something that it draws interest so people want to click on it and read more. And for, for what these dimensions are, that's, that's where I've derived that uh, minimum uh, image size from. But is right. that, sorry, just to clarify, is, yeah. that, is that something you've set yes. for that, or is that how it comes with any WordPress site? And that's how it's preset. Right. It okay. can be changed to whatever you feel. So that, those 960 by whatever, oh, that's the minimum, so it can be bigger than that. Oh, yes, yes. Ideally, you'll be very, very hard-pressed to find an image of this uh, aspect ratio, but if it's minimum, then it will fit in the slider. So it can be as, if it's larger, any, by any amount larger, then excellent. Okay, um, so now that I've covered that, there isn't any more questions on that uploading the post section of this site. All right, now I'll cover for project leaders how to edit your project profile. So now, after you've got after you've, I'll just publish this to make sure it's all up and going. One more nifty feature that you can include is you can actually preset when you want the date to be published. So say if you uh, want to publish it in the future and have already written it, it could then you could hit. Um, well, that's handy for me. New releases. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you can literally sit back and drink your coffee, and then in the morning it's published yeah. there. And it's ready, pre-done, pre-loaded. So there's another beauty of the WordPress <coughs> interface. And also one more thing that is a fantastic option that I'll just cover before I move on is if you're writing it inside the WordPress interface, you can hit. Hold on, I just. You can hit the full screen option, and it'll cut away everything. It'll cut away everything and just leave the content. So it's just, it frees, up, frees you up to get your creativity out there. I love using this to write because it just, it just gets rid of the clutter. And you just, it's just you and the words. So it's a great option to use if you're writing inside the WordPress interface. Okay, so now I'll show you how to edit the content of your, of your project profile. So to access them, you go to the Profile Items tab. And as you see here, here are all the projects listed. So for example, I'll go to the clear collaborative one. So all you have to do is click on the title, and there you go again. It's, um, it is, don't be daunted by this, this is the HTML tab, so this is the coding tab. To get it in just words, you click, oh that's right, sorry, I made a mistake. This is only, um, this one can only be edited in HTML. So I know it looks extremely daunting, but really, Look, at, visualize it as you're just viewing the content. Forget about the tags. Just so we just label the bits down the bottom and just exactly. deal with the words. Exactly. Yeah. And it, after looking at it for a while, you can work it all out. Yeah. I mean, that's the title, yeah. project team, and uh, there's your URL for it. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have to worry about this. This is what I will do. And um, you can preview it as well. So. Exactly. Exactly. So if you think you've made a mistake, you can just hit preview. Oh, yeah, without yeah. it being published. Um, so yeah, if you want to add in extra content, like for example, for example, if you wanted to add in another paragraph down here, you see, okay, P stands for paragraph, and that's um, that's the first one. That's oh, so the it's second like MySpace one. used to be. 
Exactly, basic HTML coding. Oh, okay, yeah. So you cool. may be able to apply that um, MySpace coding <laughs> experience really to WordPress. <laughs> so yeah, C social networking does is educational in a way. So you can then all you have to do is then add in add in another paragraph yeah, underneath. So whatever you want to want, add in, put it there, and hit publish and. Okay. Yeah, that's really that's really all there so is to it. Can we save that as a draft, like with the other ones, and then get you to check it before we stuff up the HTMLs? Um, you can you, you can preview the changes. Uh, I'm do, I, I don't think this has the draft um, okay. the the save as draft option. So we can just make sure we haven't stuffed anything up. And yeah, yeah, but it, it. it is very simple. I mean, if you knew how to do it in MySpace, you know how to do it here. Yeah, there's no difference to it. And also, it's the same thing. If you feel like you need it, if you've got a new logo in there, same thing as the post. You just go to your feature images, upload it from your desktop, and then set it as your feature image, and you're done. And then, yeah, as you will see, you've got the same setup with the title and the subtitle, so no difference there at all. And yeah, that's really all there is to it. So, yeah, quite simple for that. Once you get familiar with the visual editor, you'll know about 80% of WordPress, literally, the, the interface, that is. So now, is there any questions before I move on to the next section? Okay, great. Now, finally, I'll cover how to add um, events to the website's homepage. So to access that, you just hit the calendar tab. And here we have a lovely full-screen calendar for you to navigate through. So say I wanted to add something in, I want to add in this training session on for today's day. I just click on the date, it pops up with this nice little box. Um, if it's an all day event, you can select that. You can change the time, this to and from date, you can put in the title, um, where it's located. All the boxes in yellow have to be filled in. So even if you add in, you know, semi-relevant content, as long as it's filled in, it's fine. And also a great thing is that you can add in the Facebook event under the website link. So if someone forgets about it, but they're on the home page and they see it there, they can click it, go to the event link, and then accept it or deny it, whatever they wish to do on the Facebook event. So we can copy the Facebook link straight into that? <coughs> That's correct. So yeah, another great way to get your uh, events out there is using this, so I do encourage it. And that's really it to it. Once you've got that in, hit add, and it's up there on the home page. So, so do you, sorry, do you suggest that we only put um, external events on there? Yes. I would suggest sorry. it. It's very easy to get it over cluttered, and it's yes. not something that I'm aiming for. But really, just focus it on your main events. Well, yeah, the website. Should we put on, like, for example, when we're traveling to Miller? Mm -hmm. If you do, if you do believe it's necessary. Then that's okay. If it's some, I, it kind of shows like that would be our event. Yeah. Like, you know, we yeah. have dire days and whatever that's And that maybe with ones like that, you just wouldn't have the Facebook link because obviously if they clicked on Facebook, yes, that's they right. Attend, but yeah. Treat it as not only a you option. Just be like, this is what when it is. Like, mm. Yeah, this is what we're doing, sort of thing. That's yeah. right. So treat the calendar as not only an option to promote your events, but also to promote the organisation. If it's a really big event, and it might not need external, um, external. Request from the public, put it up there. It shows the public that we're active, that we've yeah. got a lot of things going on, that we're we're moving forward. So it's it's a good thing to see. So don't feel restrained that if yeah. you shouldn't or should it. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that would be very important then as you're putting in the wording on there, it's still content that the public is is That's right. So it still needs to be professional. That's right. Yeah. And correct. That's right. And I do trust that we can, we, our project leaders can do that. If you do wish that you need clarification, then by all means, we'll run it through the system of how we will clarify the posts. But, yeah, yeah, it's not hard to send you an email and say, is it okay to post this? Exactly. So, I do trust people can pull that off. What happens if we have somebody who does put a post on there? Are we able to track who posts, who updates? From the master account, I can, yes. Yeah, because that would be with each of our individual logins, wouldn't that be how you did it? From the, see, the individual logins itself as editor accounts, I've got the master account, so I can, it's pretty much the guard so account, see I can which, see everything. <laughs> yeah. Which editor did what? Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, so, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see, I see all, I hear all on the WordPress back end. So yes, it's, um, I do trust that no one will ever misuse it, but do realise that I've already I do had see a situation everything. with Dropbox, so. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yes, so do you do have know. access to the God account? Um, only through the pressure of smacking around the head at the moment. 
That but I will have. Yeah. When do you graduate? Uh, it's not next year, but the year okay, after. Okay, so you're in for a while. <laughs> but we do need to have those systems yeah. in place. Like if you know if something happens to myself or James, then we're stuck. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, like you couldn't even delete the website or whatever if it needed to be. Mm, that's yeah. right. Me and Alicia both have access to the accounts. So if you ever cannot get now, in contact Alicia with Alicia has it as well. No, she, um, you can true. get in contact with her. All right, so now that concludes the training side of it, I guess you could say. That was so much easier than what would be. I know. That's, it really is. This is the beauty of WordPress. Yeah. And as you can probably see, this really is the future of all web publishing. Mm. You let the developers handle the nitty-gritty, and you hand it over to the owners of the site, where they can use a very, very nice user interface that's so very simple. So would this be what we're doing for Quail, and then the WordPress? Mm -hmm. I would suggest it would be done in WordPress, yes. Or even, even maybe Drupal. It's another CMS that's equally as good as WordPress. So, yeah. Well, this is going to be training. Before you leave, though, I just want to talk to you about that web page. Sure, stage that sure no problem. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so moving on to section two is 